wondered what do each what does each nutrient do <laughs> all of this coming up today's uh. My name is Neha and welcome to my channel. So today is my third segment about nutrition and today is a specific day. So if you've ever wondered what nutrient does what to our body or what does each nutrient do to help in the growth of our body or protecting it or even acting as a catalyst for it to be able to absorb the other nutrients then this video is for you if you wonder what do proteins actually do to our body what do carbs do what do fats do do we even require fats and carbs at all or can we completely skip it all of this coming up in today's video if we talk about nutrients they are either macronutrients or micronutrients macronutrients are the ones that are required by our body in larger amounts as compared to micronutrients and hence the term macro and micro within macronutrients come your proteins your carbs and your fats so let's begin with proteins so proteins are the building blocks of your body they are the ones who are involved in all the chemical reactions going inside our body they are the ones responsible to facilitate our immune system to defend our body they also transport materials within our body and they also are responsible to regulate messages the sources meats fish uh, poultry dairy eggs soy all of this now proteins are of two kinds one is your structural protein like your keratin and your collagen and the other is your functional protein like your hormones your antibodies for example insulin is one of the functional proteins the function of which is to regulate blood sugar now about protein the thing is that your body requires only a specific amount of it and any excess will be stored as fat too much of it will uh, obviously put a lot of strain on your liver and your kidneys resulting in damage at a cellular level so the point to be noted is eat smaller portions throughout the day rather than having all of it at once and then having nothing uh, in the afternoon or in the evening the second point to be noted is break down these proteins in your mouth chew very well your metabolism starts here okay so now let's talk about amino acids so just like proteins are the building blocks of our body amino acids are the building blocks of proteins so think of one amino acid like one pearl bead where you can uh, combine different pearl beads and uh, form it into a new necklace right now similarly amino acids also arrange themselves and combine themselves to form new protein necklaces now imagine that pearl necklace you can form it into different si sizes and shapes like for example you can uh, convert it into one single round of necklace or you can twist and then convert into two rounds of necklaces you can make two equal rounds of necklace or you can make one smaller and the other one bigger so you can combine in different forms and shapes and sizes similarly even amino acids combine in different sizes different shapes to form new protein necklaces and each such size and shape has one single function to perform in your body now there are 20 amino acids 11 of which are produced internally by our own body and 9 of which have to come from outside from external factors from either food or supplements now the process is you eat protein food your digestive system breaks it apart into amino acids those amino acids travel to liver where the liver cells absorb amino acids then they arrange twist and fold them into new protein necklaces based on your dna plan and that is how we get our own unique nose hair eyes etc so what's to worry about when all of this is happening the point to worry is while all of this is happening during this process in the absence of even one amino acid that means if even one amino acid that is required to form that protein necklace is missing this entire process will be truncated it will not be complete there's another way that this process can be truncated and that is in the lack of synthesis which means 
while this process is taking place if your body is deficient of vitamin b6 b9 and b12 then also this process will not happen completely it will not finish for that particular cycle and instead your cells will produce homocysteine which can lead to strokes or even alzheimer's disease now of course this is not going to happen the first time that the process is truncated or the cycle is not finishing but yes if it keeps on happening time and uh, you know over and over again that is where the worry comes so about foods we have complete protein foods and we have incomplete protein foods so complete protein foods are the ones which have all the nine amino acids in them so they are your meats your fish your poultry eggs dairy soy and some are incomplete protein foods that means they have not all nine but some of the amino acids so you're required to eat them in combinations like your peas your lentils rice and grains vegetables so you have to eat them in combinations so now let's come on to carbs carbohydrates so they can be either simple carbohydrates or complex so the simple are the ones which have high glycemic index and the complex have low glycemic index what is glycemic index it's the pace at which the sugar in the food enters your blood so if it's a high glycemic index it's not preferable right uh, if we were to divide carbohydrates in their kinds they are either non-starchy uh, carbs they're either starchy carbs and they're sugary carbs so the general rule is that you should fill half of your plate with non-starchy fibrous carbohydrates ca carbohydrate foods it has lots of benefits especially for your digestive system and the regulation of your blood sugar levels so now what are the sources of non-starchy fibrous carbohydrates all your leafy greens your cauliflower your broccoli your cabbage all of this comes under non-fibrous sorry non-starchy fibrous carbohydrates next we come on to starchy carbs so the examples are your white bread root vegetables like your beets yams potatoes also refined grains like rice cakes cereal bars all of this com comes under your starchy carbohydrate overindulgence in these will lead to your cells responding like a maintenance crew of an out of control roller coaster which is which is working feverishly hard to avoid a crash which it really cannot avoid okay so if that's about starchy carbs what happens with sugary carbs they're even worse overindulgence in these is like a biological roller coaster on a daily basis it may result in frightening degenerative diseases where do you find sugary carbs your soft drinks your sweet coffees your sugary breakfast cereals granola bars cereal bars your uh, designer yogurts baked goods condiments marinades salad dressings and even candy or candy bars and chocolates for example your sucrose your table sugar the large amounts can lead to a cellular crisis that can affect your brain your adrenal glands and your pancreas as if they've been kicked hard let's come on to fats we think they're the main villains or main culprits right they aren't let's see how so we have saturated fats we have monounsaturated fats which we can call mufas and we have polyunsaturated fats which we can call pufas so about the arrangement of their molecules the saturated fats their molecules are very rigid okay they turn solid even at room temperature so for example your coconut oil your butter all of this is saturated fat your mufas have less rigid molecules so they turn solid when they're refri refrigerated so for example your olive oil your canola oil okay then comes your pufas your polyunsaturated fats there the molecules are even less rigid they're not rigid and they have many bonds so they don't even turn um, uh, solid even when they're refrigerated and the examples are your flaxseed oil your sunflower oil so saturated fat is also manufactured by your own body when there is excess carbs so cutting on saturated fat but then loading on high gi foods high glycemic index foods will not reduce your fat so i hope now you will not wonder if you don't eat the ghee on the roti and the butter on the bread but then you load up on uh, you know soft drinks or something you will not wonder now uh, that why your fat is not reducing 
saturated fats are not the bad guys you need it for a lot of things for energy for hormone production for vitamin absorption like vitamins a d e and k they are absorbed only in the presence of saturated fat you also need saturated fat for your cell membrane structure and padding you also need them for some signaling operation so you see how important they are mufas they are flexible but delicate so if you heat them too much like until smoke they turn rancid or they oxidize so here we come uh, come up with a new term free radicals means oxidized molecules they can create a havoc in your cells it's like rusting from inside out so if your oil smokes out do not use them also if mufas are chemically treated then also they are damaged so use the cold pressed ones the extra virgin oils in this case if chosen wisely mufas are very healthy for our body they provide vitamin e which is a main fighter against free radicals free radicals they are the ones that are the main culprits behind the aging behind all kinds of degenerative diseases let's talk about mufas now polyunsaturated fats they are used for blood clotting and for vitamin absorption they're very unstable remember very less rigid molecules with many bonds and so they are very sensitive also so much so that they get damaged even with a little bit of heat and light from healthy now they become rather toxic to your cells so the fact is that you should avoid cooking with pufas instead use them as salad dressings or drizzle or dips also when we talk about fats we have to talk about essential fatty acids they have a lot of benefits i have a list of them here so let me just tell them to you they give you ability to circulate oxygen via red blood cells to all the parts of your body they also prevent inflammation they prevent heart disease they give elasticity to your heart cells they inhibit cancer especially breast cancer and skin cancer they also prevent mental disorders like bipolar schizophrenia depression etc they also prevent aging they also prevent, uh, prevent any complications with pregnancy they improve the growth rate of fetus during pregnancy they are not made in the body so they should be ingested from outside food or supplements and the supplements definitely should be adhering to some guidelines some specific guidelines so there are what kinds of essential fatty acids we have omega 3 omega 6 and omega 9 it's a long list of benefits and you know uh, about the features of these uh, fatty acids read this book to get more information omega 3 is very important the best source is fish but there are some problems again what are these problems that we first of all do not eat enough fish number 1 and fish is uh, one of the only few sources of omega 3 the second problem is that if you cook fish then it oxidizes so rather than giving you omega 3 it will give you free radicals third point is that only the fishes from the upper colder region ocean water the fishes from there is what is the best source of omega 3 so you not you may not necessarily get the fishes from there or the supplements from there so the source is very important the other thing is that some fishes can be contaminated with heavy metals because of you know depending upon which rivers or which water they are from so these are whole lot of problems which come uh, in into the picture now so therefore even if you're ingesting supplements you have to know the source uh of where it is coming from and again it is very important to adhere to the guidelines if you're using supplements of omega 3 so with this we come to the end of this segment in our next segment we'll talk about micronutrients we'll talk about vitamins minerals and phytonutrients i hope you liked it if you did please like and share my video and also subscribe to my channel see you next week bye